Three women handed out flowers on the Tehran Metro on International Women's Day in March. They weren't wearing the hijab. The regime sentenced them to between 16 and 23 years in prison for propaganda against the state and for moral corruption. Two months later in May, the Iranian government banned religious minorities from working at child care centers with Muslim children. The Community to Protect Journalists reported just this past week, just uh, a few days ago, that there are 11 journals currently imprisoned in Iran. Iran's intelligence ministry is on a campaign of intimidation against elderly family members of Iranian journalists. These, these handful of examples are but a glimpse, a glimpse into 40 years of regime disrespect for its people, its disrespect that destabilizes Iran's internal order, it's disrespect that weakens its economy and makes Iran a pariah state in the eyes of freedom-loving people all across the world. Two, there's a towering hypocrisy in this mistreatment. So many of the regime's human rights violations defy its own domestic laws. Forty years ago this month, the regime adopted the current Iranian constitution. It's still in effect. Article 9 of the Constitution says that no individual group or authority has the right to infringe in the slightest way upon the political, cultural, economic, and military independence or the territorial integrity of Iran. But as protesters in Iraq and Lebanon are saying, this is precisely what Iran has done to them. What enormous hypocrisy. Article 14 of that same Constitution says that the government of the Islamic Republic of Iran and all Muslims are duty-bound to treat non-Muslims in conformity with ethical norms and to respect their human rights. But Jews and Christians and Zoroastrians, all legally recognized faith groups in Iran, are denied their full freedoms. With Christmas just uh, a week away, I can't help think of Victor Bet Tamraz. He's a Christian pastor whose home was raided during a Christmas celebration almost five years ago. He and his wife and his son are all out on bail pending, or excuse me, on bail appealing prison sentences. I'm glad his daughter, Debrina, is with us here today. Debrina, thank you for being with us. You know, that same document, that same constitution says that all people of Iran, whatever ethnic group or tribe to which they belong, enjoy equal rights. But the regime treats so many ethnic, min uh, ethnic minorities in Iran as second or third class citizens. Article 27 of the Constitution allows for public gatherings and marches, but it's when, when citizens speak up that the regime's hammer really comes down. Think of the, think of the thousands, you all, you all know them, think of the thousands of Iranians executed in prison following protest in 1988. The students that were slaughtered in the protest in 1999. And then think of the protests in 2009. We all recall the, the cries of, where is my vote? Uh, those protesters were met with more bloodshed and sentences to, serve, to be served out in places like Evan Prison. You know, it's the same story today. The regime has killed hundreds and hundreds of protesters since mid-November, uh, possibly more than a thousand. Had the regime cut off the internet basic communication tool to try and stop the world uh, to see the horrors that were taking place inside of their country. I can't imagine, but does the re regime really think that this is the path that leads to prosperity and strength? I think not. I think they know differently. I asked the same question on Iran's infidelity to its international obligations and commitments. Iran's a founding member of the International Labor Organization. But the regime steals money, drains their pensions. This money is taken from the citizens for their use to take care of their families and turns it into, well, into shell casing in the sands of Syria and Yemen. The labor organizers, labor organizers are rounded up and imprisoned and tortured. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights states that no one shall be subject to torture or to arbitrary arrest, detention, or exile. But think of the Baha'is, the Sunni minorities, or, or even non-religious persons in Iran who continually face prison and torture and execution for their faith 